Hello, this is Kerry Shoots from MathWorks. In this video, we're going to show a way to convert a spice netlist to a Simscape block and then exercise that, um, that circuit inside of Simulink. So the circuit example we're going to choose here is a very simple common emitter amplifier with a single MPN transistor surrounded by a number of resistors and capacitors that you see here on the screen. This just so happens to be a manually created Simscape version of that circuit uh, that was just where I could manually place the components into the model, connected them, configured them, and then ran the simulation. And then if you run it, um, it would look something like this when it comes out uh, in the time domain, like a transient simulation, if you will. And then you see some transient response on the left, um, and then it settles down to our nice uh, steady state response where we have some voltage gain from input to output. And if we just auto scale vertically there, we'll see we got a gain of about two and a half or so from input in yellow to output in blue. I'm also showing the uh, spectral components where I drive it with a uh, 10 kilo ohm, uh, or I'm sorry, a 10 kilohertz sine wave. And then we see the various harmonics at their respective levels, um, you know, due to some level of nonlinearity or distortion in the circuit. Okay. Uh, so that is the manually created version. What if we started with a spice netlist outside of our tools and then we didn't want to manually create the circuit? Uh, we just wanted to read in that spice and simulate it. All right. So that is where um, I had the, I had an example um, on a website called um, eCircuit Center. And I took this example, this simple common emitter transistor amplifier from there. You can see it's you know similar, if not identical circuit to what we see here on the screen. And it even has a link to download the SPICE equivalent, uh, which you'll see down at the bottom. You can also just copy and paste that circuit out. And so that's what we're using here as our getting started example to demonstrate this capability. Uh, there is also a doc that describes how to do this conversion. If I just open up the doc page on this command. Uh, the command or function which converts SPICE to Simscape is called subcircuit to SSC. Uh, so it's going to take the subcircuit portion of your SPICE file or your netlist and convert it to a Simscape language representation. We'll get more of that exactly what that means to follow. Um, and there's some more doc on it here. Um, gives even more details. Let me go back here. For some reason my uh, doc does not work well. Always uh, when I'm doing uh, recordings, uh, if we go down to the bottom here, the uh, there are some limitations associated with this. The netlist must be written in Caton's piece by format and it be syntactically correct. The conversion assistant does not check for proper piece by piece by syntax, and then only a subset of the piece by netlist language is supported. Any unsupported piece by commands are identified at the top of a uh, generated Simscape component file to facilitate manual conversion. So sometimes you do need to give it a nudge or two or a tweak here and there. Um, and then we'll get into that as we go here. All right, so this capability came out about three and a half years ago. All right, so let's go back. We, again, we started with a version of the circuit which I uh, manually uh, put together using Simscape components. Now, the question is, what if we start with um, a SPICE file like this, the one I copied from the website, um, where we de describe our device under test, the common emitter amplifier circuit. Uh, we've got some sources, voltage sources, and we've got some analysis we describe here, AC and transient. Well, for the conversion process subcircuit SSC to work, we just need the subcircuit. We don't need all of the analysis and surrounding uh, spice commands. So what we're gonna do is just clip out the device under test. We'll call that our CE amp subcircuit. Uh, describes the resistors, capacitors, and of course the transistor model here. That's what we're actually going to convert. I've got a short script. It consists of two lines of MATLAB code, the subcircuit to SSC function I just noted where I pass in the name of the subcircuit I want to convert and then the name of a package folder where the generated Simscape language file will reside. And then we're going to generate a library block and that library block will be stored in a file called CE amp circuit underscore lib. Okay, so we just call these two lines of code and let's just go ahead and do that. Let's just run that. When we do that, you'll see that it generated 
uh, here at uh, June 6, 10, 23 a.m., a package folder with a little plus symbol in front of it. Inside of there, you'll find one file. That's the Simscape language version of uh, the uh, netlist. And you could think about this a little bit like Verilog A. I mean, it's a textual description of the analog circuit. You'll see in here the uh, component descriptions, uh, the transistor model, etc. And if we go back up um, to the directory where we started, where the convert file was, we're also going to find that we generated here at the same time the library block version. This is what we're actually going to use in our simulating model, the block we're going to exercise. So in, in this block, of course, is linked to the code I just showed you. If I go underneath this block um, and click on source code, that actually points to that SSC or Simscape language file, which I just had on the screen. Okay, so let's close this. And now what we need is a test bench model to exercise this block. We need to drive it with something, measure the output, etc. Uh, for that purpose, I have a test bench file. I'll open that up. And what we're going to see here is we're going to drive something with a sine wave. We've got a 12 volt BCC. Um, and then we've got a scope. And then, so we've got some infrastructure here. We just don't have a device under test. So let's go back. Let's open up that library block we just generated. We're going to connect this up into our model. And then we could say, okay, uh, we can make that bigger. We can say, okay, I want to connect up uh, my VCC, maybe to 12 volts. I want to connect my ground down to ground here. I want to connect up my output to here. And I want to connect up my input to my, uh, in this case, I think I have a 10 killer sine wave we're driving this uh, circuit with. And then we're going to run this. We don't need the library block up there anymore. We're going to run this and see what happens. Call this up. And it looks like it's doing something meaningful. And if we look, uh, we're looking at, the, again, the transient response of this circuit um, as it settles down to steady state. And we also see the, um, the spectrum of the output <laughs> driven by a 10 kilohertz sine wave. I see there is some uh, amount of uh, distortion. Uh, we see if we are, if our input is down, I don't know, maybe is at about five or six dB, we can always zoom in, get a more accurate version. Um, yeah, down about maybe six, seven dB. And then we see that we've got some distortion components, harmonic distortion popping up down around. Um, <clears throat> 60 something or so dB down uh, from the main components. All right, and that's similar to what we saw in the uh, all Simscape simulation before. Now, taking this a little step further, uh, a step further too, you might say, well, um, it looks a little unnatural to have all of the input you know, on one side of the block when a lot of time you think of this as you know power, ground, input, output. You may have some. You want to have some, you know, um, corresponding uh, physical uh, representation when you have the block ports uh, represented here in, in Simulink. So you may want your VCC on top, your ground on bottom. You may want your input on the left that you think of the input. You may want your output that you're interested in on the right. So by default, it comes out with everything on the left. But fortunately, you can make some tweaks to get it to uh, look and, and in your own custom way. So what I'm going to do here is just um, add in this custom annotation. I'm going to copy this. And what it's going to say is put the input port on the left, put the output port on the right, put VCC on the top, and put the ground on bottom. So I'll copy that. I'll go over here to the generated block here, or the generated code. Or, and in this annotation section, we're essentially going to replace this um, existing annotation with the one I just showed you. So we'll just say control V and you can see we, I'm keeping my UI layout line as before. I'm just adding these four lines above it so I can delete these. These are um, what was there originally. And I'm going to just uncomment these. Oops, uncomment and tab that over and we'll save that. And then we'll go back to our model here. And we'll update the diagram. 
And you notice now it's got VCC top, ground, bottom, and left and out right. And now it's just a matter of rewiring it. Um, so I have input here, VCC on top, output on the right, and ground on the bottom. All right, that looks a little better, a little more natural. Let's go ahead and run this model and make sure it does the same thing. And it does indeed look like it is, both in time and in frequency. All right, so I hope that serves as a good introduction to getting uh, your netlist into Simulink without necessarily um, laying out the model and configuring it all over again. So thank you. I'll be signing off now.